Hi, everybody. Nick here again from Grocer. Uh, this is the second part of the Everything to Know God walkthrough series. Um, so in this video, we're going to look at uh, some of the different ways that you can use your Grocer farm. Um, so uh, the reason why we're able to guide you through these processes is because we have seen what works best as we've now worked with over 30 different uh, projects spanning many different types of organizations and businesses and communities, uh, each with their own unique model, but they also have similarities amongst them as well. Uh, by the end of this video, I want to make sure that you have a better understanding of the many different ways that you can take advantage of using your grocery farm and the many different use cases that we've seen uh, that be successful over our time working with these great farmers. So here at Grocer, uh, we develop modular hydroponic farms, uh, and we also provide the support to guide you every step of the way, basically from the beginning of the planning process all the way through to the lifetime of the farm all with the goal of enabling you to grow fresh produce for your community and the many other different benefits that would come along with that. So our growing technology uh, was actually first deployed for more food insecure remote communities in the north, uh, but we've since then expanded to partner with schools, nonprofits, uh, businesses, uh, and, and many non-remote communities and areas as well, who still see the value in growing food locally. Uh, if you also see this value in growing locally, which is probably why you're watching these videos, I'd love to help you become a part of this growing community as well. So when you choose to partner with Grocer, you can expect three things. You can expect a turnkey farming solution. So within four months after ordering, you'll be growing and soon be harvesting fresh produce. You can expect training and lifetime guidance. So from your project planning, like I mentioned earlier, your distribution strategies, your sales channels, uh, you will have someone by your side in the form of a customer success manager and a customer success team behind you. And you can also suspect, expect, excuse me, a self-sufficient and impactful project. So something that's economically self-sustaining, uh, generating profit, and it really all depends on which goals that you set out to do uh, during those planning stages that we work with you on. So what we've seen as, as our time has gone on growing with so many different types of organizations uh, that every project is really comes down to, yes, it's centered around the, the, the produce that comes out of it, but it's really more than food. Depending on what your goal is that you set out to do, we can work with you to make sure that it's something that the farm will be able to accomplish, whether that's education-based, uh, whether it's simply food security-based, uh, whether it is generating profit as more of a business or a social enterprise to reinvest profits back into other activities, a part of your organization. Uh, we're here to help and we're here to make sure that there's a model there that works for you. So some of the benefits that we've seen from existing grocery projects, as you're able to grow fresh, sustainable, and safe produce in any climate year-round, uh, you can offer unique hands-on learning and educational opportunities, of course, you can promote healthy, nutritious eating and wellness, uh, which is a big one for me. Um, you can foster community engagement through partnerships or donation initiatives. Um, so we've seen the grocery be used as sort of a community hub that you can really rally around and, and gain good equity in the community um, and create great programs for community members. Increase, of course, the self-sufficiency of the food supply chain uh, in your area. Uh, you can launch an economically self-sufficient project and have predictable costs associated with it. Have a very meaningful employment opportunity available uh, in, in your region. And you can also always combine grocery with other food initiatives uh, like community kitchens or gardens or farms or greenhouse operations. Um, as we do see that grocery, you know, it's not the be all end all solution to food security, but uh, our, our systems can be a really big part of it and play a massive role. So as you can see, like I've been saying, it is more about growing food. Uh, we've seen our customers make their project their own and basically focus on what's important to them and their community. Um, and just by looking at these lists, it might be uh, turning the gears in your head on certain aspects that might be sticking out to you. Uh, so when you and I do end up connecting, um, I'd love to understand right away what your goal is. And that's where we can kind of work backwards from and generate a great project plan or business plan for what you're setting out to do. So when we say grocery farm, uh, you might be kind of confused uh, as to what exactly we're talking about if you haven't looked much into what we do here at Grocer. Uh, so to give you an idea, a uh, farm is a, at a, our farm at a glance is uh, the grocery farm. It's a hydroponic modular farm or modular growing system. Um, so all of our farms are 100% designed and built in Canada uh, at our manufacturing facility in Manitoba, just outside of Winnipeg. 
Uh, so hydroponics, for those of you who aren't aware, it's essentially just a way of growing plants using no soil, but only water that's rich in nutrients uh, under lights uh, with additional um, CO2 and other aspects in the growing environment that are important to plant growth. But really what hydroponic means is that there's no soil, it's only using a nutrient solution, which is basically water with fertilizer in it. Uh, by doing this, you're able to use 90% less water. Uh, you can use 95% less land because of the ability to stack crops on top of each other using the shelves within the system. Uh, they're 40 feet by 10 feet. Uh, so that's only about a 400 foot um, footprint on, on a property. Uh, so you can measure there how many plants you can actually grow versus if you were only growing in the ground, it is quite significantly different. Uh, you're able to uh, produce 140 different types of plants um, that are capable of growing in our system. Um, so that's any, you know, different types of herbs and leafy greens. Um, and we do have a full list as part of the everything guide. You can see the cultivars guide, which outlines all the things or the uh, products that our system is able to support. And uh, of those different types, on a weekly basis, depending on the mix of crops you do choose to grow, you can grow up to about 504 mature heads of produce on a weekly basis. And we do so using a staggered planning schedule. Um, all in all, uh, typically it takes about 20 to 25 hours a week to operate and maintain the farm. Uh, and that's due in part as well to the 24 seven support and uh, remote monitoring that we are able to provide from our customer success and farm success teams. Um, so all in all, that is the overview of the farm itself. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there are many different use cases for our farm, and there's lots of different people using our farm in different ways, uh, depending on where they are, what kind of organization they are, um, and uh, just essentially what their goals for the project was set out to do. A popular among, amongst many is a subscription box. So for example, the Churchill Northern Study Center started what they call their launch box to sell produce directly to members of the community. It's a uh, $20 per week for a standard box with six types of produce in it, or it's $10 per week for a smaller box with three types of produce in it. Um, and then the pricing there is still lower than what the locals can expect from the grocery store and as well as a locally grown product. Um, they actually created their own brand, Rocket Greens, uh, because of their ties with the Churchill Northern Study Center. It sits on an old rocket launching site. Um, and actually, in September 2020, the Northern Study Center celebrated a milestone of selling more than 40,000 units of produce to date, which is pretty exciting. Um, also, on top of the subscription box, you're able to, you know, depending on your location, and we can build a model uh, that makes sense for this, and you can basically bake a donation aspect into the model. So, for example, Gets Max Mackay, Nisga Society, and Prince Rupert, Prince Rupert BC, uh, they created a subscription box as well. Um, so then the profits there are used to subsidize or provide free boxes to other members of the community that may not be able to afford it. Uh, and then there's also a big educational aspect as well. Uh, so for example, uh, KLO Middle School uses their grocer farm as an extension of the classroom. So they integrate it with current curriculum and able to show how growing produce um, is important and uh, be able to show them those skills as part of their school programs. Um, there's also the farm to store model. So we work with a few grocery stores, uh, for example, Yellowknife Co-op in Yellowknife, as well as Embrun Co-op, which is just outside of Ottawa, Ontario, uh, where they sell the produce that they grow basically steps away from the store. Um, so this reduces their uh, need on exterior supply chains, uh, reduces their need for transportation, and it essentially gives the, the, their customers and the members of their co-ops uh, the ability to grow or sorry buy produce that is essentially grown right on site and potentially harvested you know that morning uh, so you can really taste that um, in the in the freshness of the of the product um, you can also develop local partnerships so for example chrysalis is a nonprofit in edmonton uh, they sell directly to some boutique grocery stores and a farmer's market under a brand that they created for themselves called crisp then they are able to reinvest the profits back into the organization. And uh, we've also seen growers sell directly to restaurants or institutions, uh, institutions being like hospital cafeterias or other food services. Um, and then there's, you know, a mix of all of these. So some of our projects will have a subscription model as well as, uh, you know, be able to donate, like I said earlier, and then they might as well have a, a customer who's a restaurant or a local institution. Um, for example, Norway House Cree Nation, 
um, in Manitoba. Uh, they sell produce to local grocery stores, as well as one of their main customers is the school up there. So they sell to the food service in the kitchen at the school. And also community members sign up for a subscription box to receive their greens directly. Uh, so these are a few of the main examples of how people are distributing what they grow. Um, we actually recently went in depth comparing how the different types of business models we've seen our growers implement. Uh, and we've uh, kind of broken down the pros and cons of each one and the different revenue scenarios. Uh, you can actually download that webinar recording through the link in this video's description. It's part of our Container Farming 101 webinar series. It was the second installment of it. Um, and for anyone looking into uh, doing a container farming project, I highly, highly recommend watching that as well. So thank you for taking the time to learn more about Grocer. Um, I hope it's helping you already get to thinking about how you want to launch your container farming project. Um, so you can go ahead and click on the next video, which is going to dive in a little bit more about what you can grow with a Grocer farm. Thanks, and I will see you on the other side.